All right, so we're, we've created our base character, right? Our base class is entity. Uh, I just want to remind you that uh, we know this is the field region because it's in the field region. And we know these are fields. We set it up so we made our fields um, have, a, and I'm not sure why, oh, this one, ignore that. You don't have that, you shouldn't have it, get rid of it, okay. So we have this and it's protected and hold on just a second. So anyway, so we've got our fields, we know they're fields, we've got the little underscores as a reminder that these are fields. And then in the, because we're working with both uh, inheritance, we have, uh, we've made these all protected, okay. By making all of these protected, then um, we can access these outside of, in, into our derived classes like mage, lumberjack, and any other classes that we create. Um, and just a reminder, we are going to be doing the setting primarily through the, the properties, not the fields themselves. Okay. Um, and then we have our derived class. So, for example, mage. Um, I don't recall if I went over this with you guys, but we've created for each of our objects, if we want to randomly generate some numbers, we need a random number generator. And that's what this rand um, object does. Okay. And it's going to allow us to create random numbers. Now, for each of our derived objects, we have three constructors. Parameterless, so we don't have any parameters. And we just call the base class. And the base class in its constructor sets initial values to zero. Okay, so by doing this parameterless constructor, and in our, because our base sets all of these properties to zero, then in here we can set them to zero uh, by just calling the base constructor. Next, we do the mage where we give it two arguments, two parameters, name and gender. And this is going to be for when we create our object that does not... Um, in this particular case, this object, uh, the user will provide the name and the gender, and the program will generate some random modifiers. Or, if you wanted to, you might want to set it to straightforward wisdom. And, and I actually think that might be the better way to go. So I'm going to put underscore wisdom. And, and um, the reason why I'm not going to do it as a modifier is that um, a modifier is more long. I was thinking of having that be like a shield or a spell or something. So we create a random number between 3 and 8. Okay, so we basically we call the base constructor and then we um, change the name and the gender to match what the user provides. And that's what we're going to do today. However, if you want to have a pool of points, you can create um, another constructor that provides all the values. The video. So one of the things I want to cover, in, and that's uh, one of our students here, um, was noting that in, in his case, this adding strength, dexterity, wisdom was actually applied into this derived class, but not into the base class. So that might be intentional, that might be good for you. But let's put it this way, if every entity will have strength, dexterity, wisdom, and health, for example, if they all are going to have it anyway, then you might as well have the parameterless constructor give it default values in the base class and don't worry about it in the other class. So that's why I only give it two values, or three values. In this case, the first two are what the user provides, and this value here is like a random dice rolling because I would suggest that a, a, a mage is going to, by default, have better wisdom, higher wisdom. And so each of my derived classes will have various different values. Let's take a look at the lumberjack and see what he has. Um, and I didn't do it on here. So uh, my other video, I had another video I was working on and it had it, so I'm surprised I didn't put it on here. Um, but anyway, so let me just show you how I do it for the other um, and I'm going to just copy all of this code here, and you'll see what I'm going to go with this. And in my lumberjack, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to set my um, public lumberjack, and now I'm going to paste that in. So we're going to get a name and a gender for the lumberjack. We're going to call the base. We're going to set these two va values. Um, and then instead of wisdom, we might do strength, for example. Okay, because in the case of the lumberjack, probably by default, 
you know, someone who's stronger is more likely to go into the, the world of lumberjacking, whatever you call it. Um, but now this thing is giving me trouble. It's because I don't have a random number generator in here. Um, which leads me to believe that maybe I should be putting my random number generator in my entity and not have to worry about it outside. Um, why not, right? So we would have to put it in our class and I guess we'll just do it as a region protected. Um, uh, da, 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 random. There we go. Rand. Let's see if that works. Look at that. Line, it goes away. So I put the random number generator into my entity, and now all of my derived classes have the random number generator available to them. Pretty nice, huh? Slick. All right. Uh, sorry, I guess I'm a little bit. Um, OK, my mouse is freaking out on me. <laughs> and it's not wisdom, it's strength. OK, you get the idea here, right? So it's a way of personalizing each of the derived classes. Um, and so in this case, my lumberjack, you know, will have greater strength. Um, and then if there's another, you know, like dexterity, maybe lumberjacks are highly dexterous. I don't know. Uh, in which case you could put that there. So, it, and this is cool because this is basically up to you. You're the coder, you're the designer, you're the one setting um, the ideas here. So what would be, what would make sense to you? Put it in there. Okay. I'm going to pause for a second. All right, let me tell you, so if, if there are people out there that want to do the next step, they want to let the user choose, you know, they give the user 15 points, and they get to divvy them up and put them into whatever category they want. Uh, if you want to do that in your game, um, my recommendation is you do it in another constructor overload, and you just receive all the possible values. And the values could be zero, or they could be some number. Now, as far as managing, like, you know, the pool of points, like saying you can't give 15 points to one character, uh, that's going to be up to you in how you do that. But in our case, on here, you want to make it all available. So in this case, it's a mage. You're going to give it a name. You're going to give it an entity, gender. And then you're going to provide it all the others, which are going to be an its, right? Int strength um, int now let me see if I get all my numbers here so we have strength we have dexterity and I should probably put this on its own line because it's getting long dexterity it uh, wisdom Int, health. So you give it all these possible values here, okay? And then in your override, skip the error list. Okay, so in this override here, you would then set all the values. Now, as I recall, what we were doing before in our constructor is we're setting it using the properties, not the fields themselves. Um, however, I think it makes more sense to do them into the fields. Okay, so in this case, name equals name. So that's basically, this is a field, this is the value, takes this, drops it into here. Okay, and you're going to go ahead and do that here, gender equals gender Strength equals strength, and so on and so forth. You don't have to watch me do that. Basically, here we go. This is the full thing here. So every one of these parameters, um, we're going to use and apply them to the private or protected fields in this case. Name, gender, strength, dexterity, wisdom, health. And the reason why I chose to do that, I could have done it as a property. In fact, the name and gender as a property is fine, and that makes sense. But as far as strength, dexterity, wisdom, health, and if I missed something, um, I'll double check. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like I got it. There's four in all. Okay, so by putting these in the fields, remember we have modifiers for those also. So I think it's better to put them in the straight one there. So now that I have um, managed to um, excise the, uh, the, demon the demon mouse from my computer, I can proceed. Uh, okay, so anyway, <laughs> uh, that's going to kind of end this particular video section here. And on the next one, I'm going to talk about going in and making that form creator, uh, the one for creating the form here, use it to actually design um, and to use it to create our object. And then show you how to deal with that enumerator, the entity gender. So I'm going to pause while I get ready for that.